Okay, we're looking at 2019, question 3b, part 1. So a plane is inclined at an angle 15 degrees to the horizontal, and a particle is projected from a point P above the plane with initial speed 20 at an angle 60 above the horizontal. And they even put it in bold. So just have a look at the picture they've provided. It's 60 above the horizontal, not 60 parallel to the plane. So just be careful when you're drawing it. The point P is a perpendicular distance one meter from the inclined plane, as shown. Uh, the plane of projection is vertical and it contains the line of greatest slope. This is a, uh, I'll make a video about this at some point, but this statement is pretty much everywhere. Um, don't worry about it, just ignore it. Uh, the particle strikes the plane at point P, at point Q, sorry. Uh, find the time taken for the particle to travel from P to Q. So, here is one I made earlier of the drawing. As you can see, um, I have very shaky hands. Um, so, what I'm going to do is I'm just going to mark in on the uh, grid where the particle goes. So they've given you this way, and they've told you this angle was 60. So just avoid that. Now, obviously, I've drawn that more like 90. Uh, where people are getting caught out here is they would start going, oh, okay, well, if that's 60, then this is my x and my y, and this is 20, and I'm going to solve it out. And you would be wrong, because you need to make sure to do it to the plane, not to the ground, not to the horizontal. So actually, what we need to draw is a line, oops, a line that is parallel to the plane, as you can see there. And then work out, well, if that's parallel, that's 15. So then this one, if it's out of 60, must be 45. And that's really your key there. So the 15 and the 45 matter. So we'll just take a moment to actually do that now. We're going to just find the two components of our projectile. So we've got 20 this way. Oops. So we've got 20. And we've got its two components. It's uh, I and J or it's X and Y. I'll call them I and J this time. I and J. So this in here is 45. So we get that the I is 20 cosine 45, and the J is 20 sine 45. Put on my charger. There we go. So sine 45. Brilliant. Okay, cool. So we have the I and J. Uh, we, sorry, that's actually U I and U J, just to be more specific. So I can fill them in here, which I'll do in a moment. But just as well, while we're here, before we even get into the question, I'm going to just draw the particle at a point in its flight, doesn't matter where, and I'm going to think about the acceleration. So acceleration is a minus g, it's acting downwards, and we need to resolve it parallel and perpendicular to the plane. So I'm going to draw a little triangle that is parallel and perpendicular to the plane. And don't forget to put your arrows in just to help you. So there's your 90 there. This in here, then, it is always whatever the plane, uh, whatever this number is down here. It's going to be the same. So uh, that would make this side minus g cosine 15, because it's adjacent. And this would be minus g sine 15, because it's opposite. OK, cool. We're kind of on the way now. Now, for this part one, where they asked us to find the time, we'll see in a moment that I actually only need the j um, vector, uh, sorry, the j vectors j vectors, uh, but I'm going to go ahead and get, just write them all in, because you end up using them anyway in a moment. So, ui is 20 cos 45, we found that over there with the yellow, so 20 cosine 45, and uj is 20 sine 45. Then we've got our final velocities we don't know, we've got our ai, which we found up here, is minus g sine 15. And this is minus g cosine 15. Uh, just be careful, common mistake I make, I'm not even going to say students, is I often put 45 down here because I'm just going too fast. So take your time, draw it all, double check, because you only need to do it once and do it right. Uh, you don't know the range si, so there's no point in writing that. We don't know the time. Do we know the uh, sj, though? And we're going to see that actually we do. So let's take a look. If it was on a flat and I fired a projectile, I would say, okay, well, in terms of the sj direction, what value is this? Well, it's just zero. 
and that's grand. But in this case, we're firing from, we've started at a height and it's landing somewhere. Now I know I'm drawing this in the flat, but it's just so you can kind of get understanding. So if we're calling this reference point here zero, then how much has it dropped? And it's dropped by minus one. So in this case, our SJ will be minus one. And that's really um, important just to kind of get that pivotal understanding in your head. So in this case, we have minus one. So they asked for the time it lands. Well, let's check what we have. We have U, we have A, we have S, we have T. So can we find when it lands? Yes, we can. So we're going to go S equals U, T plus A half, A, T squared. So S is minus one. U is, uh, uh, I've already forgotten, 20 sine 45. Don't forget your t, plus a half minus g, got to check it again because I've forgotten, cosine 15, t squared. You probably already know what you're going to arrive at here shortly, but we'll plug it in anyway. This is 20, sine 45 is root 2 over 2, and t is t. Uh, minus g over 2, cosine 15, which is not nice. Cosine 15 is not a nice number, so make sure you have your calculator handy. At this point now, you could leave it as cosine 15. You can plug this in, you get a really ugly looking thing in your calculator. Um, and it's fine to solve it, but you're just going to get a quadratic. So I'm going to say cos 15 by 9.8, and then divided by 2, and I'm going to hit my change button, is uh, minus 4.733 uh, t squared. Three decimal places is more than enough. It's not going to throw your minus b formula out. So bring everything to the left. And you'll realize that you have a quadratic. Not a pretty one. But generally, whenever you're doing these projectile questions, if you don't get a quadratic when you're doing it on a plane, or on, a, on an incline, then the examiner was either very friendly or you've, you've forgotten that you're on an incline. Okay, cool. And you just plug it into the minus b formula. Now, I'm going to plug it in, and I'm not going to lie to you. This is my second time doing the video, because for the longest time, I couldn't figure out why I wasn't getting the answer, even though I had all the right numbers. Uh, so if b, there it is. Squared, b squared, minus 4, ac. All over 2a. Now, what I forgot when I was doing this was this squared. Oh my god, tell you what, I had to throw that whole video out because I ended up swearing quite loudly. And it ruined the, uh, it ruined the, you know, the ambience I was going for of being chill. So uh, we end up getting two answers for t, and I always want to talk about this because it's relevant. So you plug it into your calculator, and one answer you get is 3.05 or 0 0.06 seconds. Um, and the other answer you get is minus 0 0.069 seconds. So I got two answers. I wrote them dangerously close together. But which one is right? Well, hopefully it's pretty obvious it's this one and not this one. Reject. Okay. But why are we getting this one? Why are we getting a minus answer? And the simple fact is if we go back to our diagram, okay, if you turn your head slightly, you'll see that this here is actually a quadratic. Okay, there it is, when you take the planes to be this way. So there's one root, that's 3.05, and this one is actually more, sorry, that's where my x should really be. Okay, then it's going to go back on that axis to before, so as if before, if you started back here. Of course, we're going to get rid of all that because I'm going to screenshot these stuff for myself in a moment. But, okay, so there you can see why you get two answers. You take the actual answer you need, which is 3.06, and I believe that is the end of that question.